Hello, everyone. This is Dr. K. On today, uh, as I try to uh, preach uh, the message for uh, today, um, we know a lot has been going on with the Trayvon Martin case, and we also know that um, the verdict came back uh, where he was found not guilty. And many conversations have been going on in response to that verdict. We know we've been having rallies called the 100 City uh, Rally uh, to Action. Uh, but what we, I, I think, are, are forgetting is a number of things that the church, and this message is for those who are listening who are believers, can do. I know that we have turned to um, politicians and, and, and other people to try to find the solution but I think our solution is, 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 is really in the hands of, of God, um, and it's, it is uh, more divine uh, intervention that we need to ask for more so than uh, turn to the world for our uh, solution. Uh, went down to Louisiana for a uh, wedding of Victor McGee and Miranda and um, got a chance to call a lot of family and friends and talk to uh, a cousin, Reverend Larry Crockett down there in Kenner, Louisiana. And we were talking about what we need to do and, and the scripture that came to Reverend Crockett um, was Second Chronicles 7, uh, a few verses in there, 12 to 14, somewhere like that. And I thought it would be good and appropriate to, to talk, to preach uh, on that message um, today. So that's what I'm going to do. I want you to um, turn to Second Chronicles. And we're going to begin at verse 11. Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, verse 11. And we're going to read down probably through verse 18. Listen to what it says. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, all that Solomon had planned to do in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he successfully accomplished. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. Verse 14, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal the land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made, listen, in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. And as for you, if you will walk before me as David your father did, doing according to all that I have commanded, you and keeping my statutes and my rules, then I will establish your royal throne as I covenanted with David your father, saying, You shall not lack a man to rule Israel. Uh, let us pray. Father, I stretch my hands to No other help I know if thou withdraw 
thyself from me. Tell me where shall I go? Dear God, we come to you today realizing that you have all power in your hands. I ask, dear God, that those who may be listening, however they may be listening, will hear the message on today and uh, let it uh, sink deep down in their spirit that they may bear much fruit from it. Bless the time, dear God, that we are really concentrating and lifting you up and honoring you. Give us the guidance that we need, dear God, to do what you would have us to do. We pray, dear God, in the only name that we know, the name of Jesus the Christ, and wherever you are all over the world, please say amen. Today I want to talk about the subject, that uses a subject, ain't too proud to beg. Ain't too proud uh, to beg. Uh, I can think about uh, coming up, especially when I was dating uh, my now wife, uh, Pastor Michelle McClendon McGee, and it, it, it not only with dating, but also with being married, sometimes when I really wanted something, I was not too haughty, I was not, I was not too proud to beg for what I wanted and what I believed I needed. I can think about children uh, coming up and they want something from their parents. But if they really, really wanted something from their parents, then they were not too proud to beg their parents and to keep uh, after their parents and keep asking their parents uh, for what they really, really want it. This is true for us today. We are going through so much chaos in our world. It seems like our economic systems are failing. It seems like our marriages are failing. People are turning to people of status, people of fame, uh, the judicial system, and others who are elected officials, but no one seems to have the answer. But I believe that the answer is in the church and especially with God. So the problem seems to get bigger and bigger, but the solution is really there before us, and I believe is found in Second Chronicles 7, and I read 11 through 18, but really is found in verse um, 14 to really tell us what we must do. And my cousin, Reverend Crockett, said it's a recipe for restoration. I like that. God's recipe for restoration. And so I'm going to use a little bit of that on today uh, in this short sermon is that he gives us our recipe for restoration and and you cannot be so proud that you would not beg. And I'm using beg in an analogy of prayer. And this is, is what it says. If my people, God is claiming you as God's own, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves. That means you got to stop thinking about how much money you have. You got to stop thinking about the status you may have even in the church. You got to stop thinking about how many degrees you have. You got to stop, stop thinking about the, the, the car or cars in which you have or in which you drive. You got to stop thinking about that. You have got to humble yourselves and pray. Prayer is a communication with God. Prayer is a way by which we are, are, are with the right now God right when we pray. It says also, and seek my faith. You really have got to uh, want to be in the very presence of God. 
calling us to turn away, as it says here, from our wicked ways. It's no way possible for us to come in the presence of God with sin all over us. We know that with Jesus' sacrifice on Galgatha's hill, on Calvary's cross, it's no way for us to walk into God's presence. We got to be clean, we got to be holy, but we got to turn away from wickedness and evil. And if we do all those things, humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face, and turn from our wicked ways. This, this uh, four-point condition in order for, we, for us to have uh, restoration or healing in our land, the Bible says, God speaks through his word, then will I hear from heaven. Forgive your sin and my sin and heal the land. And I believe our land, not only our country, but the world really needs to be healed. We are really uh, human beings, and we have separated ourselves by denomination, by religion, by race. And so it clouds how we see the world when we should be looking at it from a higher transcendent perspective to do what God will have us to do. And God wants the church, and I'm saying it's not in a denomination, his church, God wants us to be about his business to bring about justice for all. Yes. The question is for you on today, are you too proud to beg? Are you too proud to pray and do the rudimentary things like prayer and worshiping God and seeking God's face so that we can have healing in our land? Well, I want to call you to focus on God every day and to pray specifically for healing in our land. But a part of our healing means that we all have got to turn away from our sin, turn away from all wickedness, and stand up for what is righteous in the sight of God. And God makes a promise to us that he will heal our land. God makes a promise to us that we will be blessed going in and blessed going out. God makes a promise to us that everything will be all right. But you have your part to do. God has never forfeited on any promise that he has given. You have your uh, part to do. And part of, of what you must do is you must pray, seek his face, turn from your wicked ways, and, and humble yourselves firstly. And then he will hear Heal our land. Let us do that on today, wherever you may be. If you would bow your head and be with me as we pray this prayer and also for salvation for those of you who do not know salvation and the pardoning of your sin. Let us pray. Dear God, we do come to you for those who are listening um, by Facebook or those who are listening uh, on YouTube or those who are listening, wherever they may be listening, dear God, I pray that you would help us follow your guidance, follow your recipe for restoration, for healing, so that we can be made whole. Dear God, we thank you now for uh, what you have given to us. We thank you now for uh, those who are willing to do those things that you have said to do. And we ask, dear God, that you will bring them into your presence, that they may truly know salvation, and that all of their sins may be pardoned. Dear God, we thank you now. In the name of Jesus the Christ, and everyone all over the place said, Amen. Second Chronicles 7.14, I ain't too proud to beg. Get your blessing on today. Pass the message on to someone that if you really want to be blessed, if you really want to be restored, if you really want to be healed, humble yourselves, pray, seek God's face, and turn from your wicked ways. This has been Dr. Kilowatt McGee, and this has been your 15-minute sermon.